Hey. Hey, people. Hey, I got it on black and white. I know it's red out there. Um, let me move out of the way. I'm just naked under here, guys. It's so hot out there. There's still medicine. But yeah, I want to do that. But show you the background there, too. Okay, there we go. So, um, hmm. I just want to share with anyone that um, has the time to listen. Um, how far I've come. Give you some highlights and lowlights of um, the life of Harry Maradine, Let's go, Harry, whatever you want to call me, human being. Here in duality. Um, it's nice to think about how far we've come on our journeys. Because we don't think about enough how far we've come on our journeys. Um, how much we've changed. Because we habitualized us. All humans are subject to habitualization. We get used to being mended. Not thinking the way we used to. How I used to think, how we used to think, is a far cry um, from what, what it was. It really was. So I'll try and explain, give you some highlights of what my brain was like um, when I was going through the darkness. Maybe it will uh, remind you of how far you've come or give inspiration to carry on because life is hard here in duality. It's fucking tough, man. It really is fucking tough, especially this time for everyone. But even before this time, Let's be real here, guys. For us, there's been some serious darkness um, that I've experienced, and you have too in your own ways. Yeah, Leaf Man. Some seriously tough shit. But you know what? It's, it's, it's a cliche, yeah, but it's actually true that what you go through, your wounds, uh, makes you the awesome person that you are, and your personality shining through your wisdom, what you've know, what everyone's come to learn. I've seen so many people on Facebook know so much. I've learned everything I've ever known. <laughs> it's a joke. It's either from really good books or the last five years of my life is from social media. I've learned so much from Facebook since 2016. It's a joke from you guys. Like Literally, I've been a sponge and I've taken that information that I've learned, put it to use experienced it for myself and come a long way in my healing a long way so here's some highlights of what i used to be like um i've used to visualize um i mean i don't think it's unusual for a lot of us to have had suicidal thoughts i was definitely there um, the mental torture prison of the brain i often wonder guys like you know people that are physically incapacitated where they're blind they have an accident they lose their legs um those are tough living in pain but quite honestly I, i've had these thoughts a lot like is it worse to have the physical pains or is it worse to have the mental pains because the mental pains that you put yourself through and i put myself through they're really fucking tough like a mental torture prison you live in your body yeah you live with your mind so when you create, um, <laughs> whoever's fault is, when you have a dark mind and you think so negatively, that becomes a prison. And it's a really unhappy place. You take away, take yourself away somewhat from the present moment. And as your self-esteem goes down, you start, I mean, everyone gets taken away from the present moment. But particularly with low self-esteem and the negativity, it pushes you away from the present even more. Then you start thinking more. And you start going down this negative thought loop cycle of corruption. It's really bad. So yeah. Hey, Bailu, man. Yeah, physical might be worse too. I don't want to be living in physical pain 24-7. I will say that the mental torture prison of my mind was fucking unbearable. Like, really fucking unbearable. Do you know how I know it was so fucking unbearable? I used to cry every night, for example. You're in my room. And say, why God me? Why God me? Now I know the answer was chosen i chose it probably isn't that nice to think about but probably true i chose all the suffering but anyway i created this mental torture prison of why god me and um i remember screaming in pain like in my mind when i knocked my self-esteem so much that i get addicted to negative attention because I have a quick theory here, and this might be quite long, guys, so stay with me if you're interested in this stuff. Like, um, this is not just me, this is theories I've got. Like, everyone gets their self-esteem knocked, but some of us, more than others, 
and that means we get away from the present moment and when your self-esteem when you feel invisible and not heard and when you're going through shit and you feel like you're not heard and this trauma comes up and you feel invisible and no one can understand you you create um from a positive self-esteem that the ego basically can't handle being invisible it is worse than being negative um worse than getting negative attention to the ego it really is when you start fucking yourself up with trauma or other people to you and you start feeling like feeling like you're invisible and no one understands you the ego will basically lose self-esteem and how that manifests is you'll start attracting negative attention this is a really simple way to explain it but it's fucking true and what i mean by that is have you ever noticed people with low self-esteem me more so in the past way more if you guys knew me before and i know you guys too you notice that when you lose your self-esteem um you attract a lot of negative attention they go hand in hand but the whole point of losing self-esteem and how people die how you can diagnose low self-esteem in someone is they will act different to what's normal because we all have an idea of what's normal in social interactions and who we are by ourselves and other people um but when you feel unworthy and all the traumas are not heard and you feel invisible the ego can't handle trust me guys worse than negative the ego will do anything to receive attention when it feels unloved and unlistened to, to the point where it will quite happily knock your self-esteem and your ability to be present. And you will start developing what we call a personality. Um, I'm only speaking for experience. You'll develop a personality over, um, over negative attention. And that's been a story of not just my life. That's the story of anyone that's had their self-esteem seriously knocked through being on felt like they've been unheard as they were going through traumatic events which they know to be true but there was no one there for them to either to be compassionate or to understand or to show them the light <laughs> no way to show the light but even to be compassionate understanding there's no one so you develop this negative attention thing and i was addicted to it um i've had severe I've still got it now guys so i'm gonna fucking lie to you why should i lie but oh my god have i changed a lot i know what it's like to have severe fucking low self-esteem severe the manifestation of what was a severe addiction, my personality developed around attracting negative attention subconsciously, not on a conscious level. People don't have low self-esteem on a conscious level, it's all unconscious. So for me, that I was just walking around 24 seven, my being, my whole essence was addiction to negative attention, to being different, to being damaged, that was part of the dealios. So my physical mannerisms, you know, the mannerisms, were like, shit man, this guy's fucked up. It was obvious to strangers, it was obvious to the people that were around me in school, as I was going downhill, but even to strangers, that was the degree of low self-esteem I was carrying around, because quite honestly, there's degrees to low self-esteem, right? But a lot of people, here's deep, something deep, simple but deep, a lot of people have their self-esteem knocked, but they don't have it knocked enough to do anything about it. It's like unhappy people. In order to change, you have to be knocked to a really low place. It can't just be a little bit of low self-esteem because that won't give you the motivation to change. But if it's seriously fucking low and everyone, you're addicted to this negative attention shit. I was like, I can't go on like this, man. I, like I'm addicted to this negative attention shit and it's killing me. So I had to change, you know? So it's, sometimes it's gotta be like, this is what makes me smile. What's coming? Like, if it's really bad, it will wake people up. If it's not bad, it won't. It needs to be a serious low self-esteem damage in order to wake people up to self-esteem. Because I, if I'm being honest, I'll just be honest here. I see a lot of people with low self-esteem that are never going to fix it because it's not bad enough. And they develop a personality um, with their friends and their social life where they're just that low self-esteem person. They're just that's who they are. And that's OK. There's no judgment that's how you gain acceptance into the group and i'm glad that people with low self-esteem get acceptance into the group that's cool but for some reason i got lucky and i didn't get acceptance into the group with low self-esteem and i thought fuck it man it was part of my mission here that i may have chosen i'm gonna fucking change i'm not gonna actually not a truth you know what triggers me the most <laughs> this is funny what triggers me the most is people with low self-esteem that don't change, and I know they'll probably never change. Why? Because I probably have worse, I have worse, I've had worse self-esteem issues than most people that are perennially going to have low self-esteem and 
Do you know what I mean? You're annoying auntie that can't shut the fuck up. But it's not self-aware to realise that she can fucking change. She's just got this underlying self-esteem issues. So many people have. And it actually triggers me, if I'm being real, because... I mean, it shouldn't, though, but it should it, because mine was so low that I've got any... I feel like there's very few people that have transmuted, if I'm being real, self-esteem issues. It's quite to the degree I have. I feel in my heart, I just don't want it. I reject it. I think that's what made, made woke me up, if I'm being honest and real with you guys. The darkness of the mind, the low self-esteem. It really did wake me up to such a tremendous degree. I couldn't live with it. I couldn't live with the pain. Anyway, so, some other highlights. Um, you know, um, so I didn't just want to kill myself, I wanted, I hated the world, I just wanted to kill other people too. So I'd had visualisations of blowing people up and being a suicide bomber. I thought that would be a great path. Now the reason why I wanted to kill other people was, not only was I suffering and in pain by myself, that, and I knew that no one, I thought that no one cared. I thought, fuck it, the whole world has rejected me. Like, my parents don't listen. Friends and family don't give a shit. No one would care if I don't want to be here. But it was more than that. It was like, fuck them. It was anger at other people for letting me down. That's how I felt. I felt let down. As I was going through the trauma, I felt let down. So I didn't just want to check myself out. I wanted to do it in a way where I would check other people out for the hurt and pain they caused me. But it wasn't the hurt and pain they caused me. It was just being ignored as I was going through all this stuff when I knew I was right. It was really tough. So... Yeah, that was crazy. Um, I'll give you other examples um, that I've tried to remember for this because I can go wishy-washy. But it's important to speak about these things because people think that you've always been like this. You know, I've always been strong. I am actually fucking strong. But I haven't always been like this. I've had to learn and I've had to have the support of people like ourselves on social media that, to know that I've been speaking the truth all along and I'm not crazy. I think the biggest part of your healing journey is learning that other people think like you and you know your deep thoughts and your suffering which you think is unique to you and you're the only person is actually not because we've all suffered but it's not about a suffering it's acknowledgement that your suffering has a meaning and that what you think is right you know the acknowledgement of the person that stops the trauma like what you think is real anyway a couple of other highlights um i don't you probably guys have probably not seen seen a film called punch drunk love um, but there's a scene in that, I love that film, outside of the scene, but there is a good scene in that with Adam Sandler. Um, it's a really funny film, I love it. <laughs> it's, it's really good, actually. There's a scene in it when, that reminds me of me, that I've never seen in a movie before. Um, it's always going to remind me of me, and I forget this sometimes, but I used to be like this. Like Adam Sandler is like really socially anxious and strange and weird. Beautiful, though. Beautiful song. And he's got loads of sisters, but he's really socially anxious. He's been invited by sisters, seven sisters, I think he's got, and he's only a brother. He's invited to go to a dinner party with all his sisters and their husbands, so his brother-in-laws and his sisters. Because he's socially anxious, um, you can see him as he gets to the door. Um, is it the window or the door? I think it's double glazing or something, whatever. And um, he knocks on it. He, he doesn't knock on it. He thinks about knocking on it, and he's like, OK, I'm going to go in. So he does that. And then he stops and he doesn't knock on the door. And he goes, okay, okay, I'm going to do it now. He, he gets the courage up and just knocks on the door and doesn't do it. And he does it again. He knocks on the door and doesn't do it. He does it like three or four times. And that reminded me of me. I'm sure some of you guys can relate to this. Like a really socially anxious state where you keep not taking action and replaying the deep. The, it's, it's like we all have doubts in life, yeah. Like when we, um, you know, we go and go to this social event. We don't go in our minds 100% of the time with like, oh, yeah, I'm going to love this. Introverts, it, mostly, most of us are introverts. You're an extroverts, though. Maybe extroverts are different. I don't know. I don't even know if I believe in the introvert, extrovert. Anyway, my point is that we never go full flow when we want, when we're outside our comfort zone ever. Would that be, and I think a lot of us are like, socially anxious and introverted in a way with people we don't know i think all humans are with people we don't know it's normal to have doubts but we'll do the right thing often this is my point most humans will do the right thing so we'll say okay this is a party there's gonna be some opportunities here but you'll be a bit nervous maybe before because you don't know anyone and especially when we get to the event um have you noticed how this is like a something i love psychology by the way you'll see but every human 
within 20 minutes of being in an environment, the first five, 10 minutes of being around other people, you'll see people retreat into like going over the top in their personalities because they either feel uncomfortable. You know what I mean? We can't, it takes us 20 minutes or something, half an hour in an environment with a certain map, with, with people we don't know before we start realizing, oh, okay, it's safe. We can be ourselves again. <laughs> it happens to pretty much every human. You'll see it when there's a, like when you're in a group of people you know and there's new people come in, you'll see that the new people can't be themselves fully. Like, and even you, you'll start feeling a bit, maybe you can because you've got other people, but it's just a common psychology thing. But there's levels and there's extreme. And that's what I used to be like. And maybe some of you guys can relate. The Adam Sandler character, I remember going to things and I'll muster up the courage and then just wait and wait and wait. Like Adam Sandler at the door, like, okay, gotta go in now. But you're actually there, but you're not. You gotta, gotta go in, go in. And, and this is a, a how fucked up the mind is because you're not just having the thoughts like the slight doubts this it's not slight doubts it's major doubts like adam sandler because he's fucking not actually he's physically manifesting stopping and starting like okay i'm gonna do it in physically in action okay i'm not i'm gonna do it i'm not i used to do that all the time socially anxious like you wouldn't believe oh my god do you guys know how fucking socially anxious i was <laughs> no that's why i'm making this video you don't have a fucking clue i could not walk up to a stranger and ask for the time. I could not go to the shops and buy shit. I could not get out of the house. It was really fucking bad. It's, it was demons of the mind, like real, which I self created. <laughs> I created it all. Like, I must admit, it's all fucking me or divinity, but it was really bad. And that bit in the clip in the movie. If anyone's interesting, I can show you that. I love that clip. It's always going to remind me of me because that's how bad it was. That's one ha thing that I've changed tremendously because now I'll just take right action. I'll always do the things that I fucking afraid of, even in social interactions, social anxiety, which I've still got because I'm human. Um, but actually now, if I'm comparing myself with most other people, now you'd think that I'm actually not socially. I don't even get any. But. I had it way worse, the social anxiety, than almost anyone I fucking know. But now, because I've practiced uh, not being, just doing the right thing, I've got this thing in my brain now where I take right action. Just tied in with self-improvement, which is tied in with growth, which is tied in with why I'm here. Beyond physical health, I've put in a lot of work into self-help, like a lot. A lot. Bef way before I got into physical health, I've done a whole 360 on my mind. My mind was super dark. And I think that's the reason, I've also been thinking of this, that's also the reason why I'm very strong and I'm super positive and super optimistic. But I'm grounded in it. So I'm not fucking hippy-dippy optimistic. I'm grounded in the reality, truths of optimism. I often think of that and I think it's because I've had, I've literally rewired my brain a lot because it was super fucking negative. Oh, I'll share with you too, guys. Like... I couldn't trust anyone. I had no trust in any human. Maybe that's tied in with why I wanted to blow people up and fucking hate them. I could not trust any human. They're, can you imagine that? Like, my brain was saying, trust no one. I mean that. Trust. No one is to be trusted. Not as, not friends, not family, but get this, not strangers. I mean, we don't get that bad, do we? Do you, maybe, guys? Maybe some of you do, but most of us, even when we start losing trust in our friends and family and thinking, oh, I'm going to walk into a relationship with, a, uh, I've had a bad experience with one partner, so I'm walking to all bad. Do we really lose trust, trust in strangers? Because I lost trust in everybody. What I'm saying is I lost trust in humanity. In that regard, what incredible transformation. Because now I have trust in fucking people, maybe, that I shouldn't have trust in, <laughs> quite frankly, and that's tied in with the optimism, because my brain's changed so much, Jesus, so yeah, that's how much change, there's another highlight that I want, I've been thinking about, that I need to get across, and just how bad I was, as I was rewiring, and coming up, and taking action, so just to go back as well, I was really scared to talk to strangers on the street, I couldn't ask anyone for the time, all that shit, like, oh god, you have no idea. I remember I set, when I started this journey, um, I set myself a challenge to ask an old person for the time. Okay, <laughs> this is going to sound ridiculous. 
I, I set myself a challenge to ask old people, like a old person for the time. And I made out that if I couldn't do that, I'm a fucking failure. And I remember trying. This is how pathetic and weak I was. But I'll share it with you guys. I remember thinking that was, I had to do it. I had to do this thing. And I couldn't do it. I spent like two hours walking around town and I couldn't build myself up the courage to ask an old person for the fucking time knowing that it was a lie because I didn't need to know the time, but I wanted to pray face by social anxiety skills. And I remember going on the bus back after two hours of not doing it, but trying to and crying like a pathetic little baby. I was crying like a fucking baby. Um, am I being harsh on myself? Yeah, a little. I'm judging myself. But that's how pathetic I was. <laughs> that's all. Well, that's one way of looking how because honestly guys that is pathetic let's be honest here you can't ask an old person for the time and that's the entire challenge but you're so socially anxious that you can't do that wow how fucking pathetic are you in a way but how sad and how demonic was my mind how fucked up was i i had no trust in people socially anxious what's gonna happen if you ask someone a fucking time mary man you know i could talk forever guys uh I, you know I don't want to try to try and focus, try to focus. It's tied in with actually what woke me up, which was um, a desire to sleep with girls just to, because I thought getting laid and having sex with girls would fix me. And how wrong I've come to learn since then. That, that was all fucking bullshit. So I got into pickup artistry or actually that's what woke me up. Pickup artists who actually spoke the truth. Like, people that said things that I was like, yeah, this makes sense. And um, I couldn't do it. And so I had to start like this socially anxiety like thing with talking to old people and I couldn't even do that. I remember <laughs> I remember I remember going into clubs and trying to talk to girls and failing because I couldn't even talk to them, didn't have the courage, and then crying. How pathetic is that? That's so sad. <laughs> I used to cry when I couldn't do these things. Weird. What a weird world. What, I was really socially anxious, man. You guys have no idea. No idea. I learned, though, when that was the beginning of the journey for me, facing my fears. So it started with walking up to strangers and asking for directions just to get social interactions going and facing those fears. The biggest fears that I ever had, asking for the time. Then it moved on to um, when that got a little bit easier and it took fucking time to ride a brain to chatting up girls. And that was a cool thing because that made me feel good. That started the process ultimately of me rewiring my brain. I figured out since it wasn't about, um, not that I ever got good at that, by the way, but it was never about getting laid. What it was, what that gave me was it rewired the brain. Really, it was about my brain healing, taking myself back from negativity, not trusting people, to realizing that I could create any kind of personality that I wanted to. Because literally, my personality got kicked to shod. I kicked it through the trauma and um i created a new personality to degrees i don't think anyone fully would ever understand either i mean i know that this is all like, oh he's a fucking victim but um there's a couple of things that were hard but like, i really did kick my personality to to, to to shit i really did i really kicked it to fucking shit and i've had to develop a personality to degrees that i've never seen in another human tied in with a low self-esteem it's all tied in when you lose your self-esteem, you lose your personality, you lose your freedom, you lose your presence. So I've had to work hard at facing my fears and rewiring this brain from negativity, which has given me something of a personality, which I'm kind of grateful for. So that's cool. And I can always develop it. But anyway, there's one other highlight I want to give you as I was coming up. That's kind of shows how fucked up I was. <laughs> but bless me, I was healing. So that's important. It's like when I'd have... Um, an interaction with somebody, whether it be friends, family, or just a stranger. Um, many hours after that interaction, I would replay it in my mind over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And I know now that that's not normal. I don't think anyone can convince me that is because I don't do that anymore. And I know what's normal. Like, after you've had a, a positive interaction, you don't replay that over. 
I mean, for example, if someone said hello to me on the streets, or my friend said hello, or I said hello to my friends, I would be in my room hours later, and I would out loud say to myself, with no one watching, hello, like they did. And what that shows me is, um, not in a bad way, but I was healing so, I was so far behind that I needed to replay that positive interaction that someone was having with me or I was giving someone in my mind overtly subconsciously to the conscious because I was so I don't mean to be mean to myself I was so needy for that reference experience to heal myself there's levels of healing that we are all undergoing me and you guys now but I was um and I'm not judging it or am I just I am actually judging it because I'm trying to tell you how bad it was for me as I was coming up, I was needy for the good reference experiences. That's why I replayed out loud in my mind the interaction. I'd be like, like, or even like, say the postman came, knocked on the door and said hello. And I opened it. Then I'd come to my room. And then 10 minutes later, I would out loud blurb. You know how low self-esteem people blurb shit? They blurb it. They can't help it. You're annoying auntie. Can't help. Shut the fuck up. But they can't help it because they're being themselves because they got damaged in self-esteem. See? Well, I couldn't help it. But I was taking back my self-esteem, so I'm proud of that. But it was so bad that I needed... I came out, the blurb, the reference, like, oh, I just had this interaction. Like, oh. Not just the unconscious, because everything goes through to the unconscious. It comes through to the conscious. Like, out loud. I was like, okay, I've just done this interaction. Why is it replaying in my mouth out loud? Because... I needed a reference experience because my brain was completely fucked up, but it was rewiring, and that's the good news. I was rewiring, but that's just a reference of how bad it was. It was seriously bad. I would replay it so many times, so many times, so many times. You guys have no idea. It's so mad. Like, and I know it's not normal now because I don't do it, and um, I'm sure many of you even can't relate to that. I'll be surprised. I'm just trying to emphasize that I really did have a really fucking bad level of self-esteem again. It's so bad that I believe ultimately that my fucking brain, I'm not even in my body, like, properly. Like, I'm off-center 24-7. When I do extreme health protocols, like Adrian sun gazing, high-quality supplements, I get, like, an indicator, a reminder that I'm not off-center because they're so powerful and they're trying to get me back into balance. And the only thing that's only ever done that is psychedelics, to a degree, completely, for moments and hours at a time. But that's just how bad, I mean, that tells me the mind... It's fucked up. All our minds are fucked up. That's what makes us the warriors that we are, that we should be totally grateful for. But I've been into really dark places, guys. It's been a fucking hell. And like I said at the beginning, like, the ego can't handle being invisible. When you have positive self-esteem, when you believe in yourself, it can. When life starts going wrong, your ego can't handle being invisible. So it's, it rather... Will, it will develop a personality that gets addicted to negative attention. It will rather do that to survive than to be invisible whilst you're going through tough shit and losing your positive self-esteem. Because, by the way, when you have positive self-esteem, you don't need validation, do you? You just love yourself and nothing goes wrong in your life. You don't need to. You, you can be invisible at certain moments at a time because you just love yourself. But when you, when you go through these traumas that other people give us often, because quite honestly, even with me, I didn't create this, did I? It was situations and people in my life that have given this to me. Yes, I am to blame for not understanding at the time and it going downhill. Um, but yeah, I know this is super long. I appreciate you guys watching, but this is good to get off my chest. This is very cathartic healing. If this, if any of you guys can relate to this, let me know. This is important. Um, it's important to know that the worst shit you go through I don't think you're the only one that's going through it, man. There's nothing unique about any of us, I don't think. We're all trying so hard and life is so fucking tough. And it's nice to remind ourselves of how fucking far we've come. Because honestly, it's ridiculous. I think the biggest changes in you, it's not the physical health or anything. It's the mental, it's the brain. The brain rewiring. Like, if you were seriously depressed, um, alienated yourself, socially anxious, weird, and now you are somewhat the opposite, that's cool. Also, another thing with that quickly, I think it's an important phase to go through when you are low self-esteem and addicted to negative tension in the laws of duality to do the opposite. So if you, were, if you are so fucking low in self-esteem and negative attention addiction, 
the, the only way out of it, in my opinion, to, to, to transmute that is to go completely the opposite. It's not just to give it a half ass to neutral. It's to get addicted, correct me if I'm wrong, to positive attention. It's like yin yang. You've gone so far. You've developed a personality that's addicted to the negative attention, aka low self esteem. The only way out of it is what I've done is get addicted. I'm not blaming myself. Get addicted to positive attention. Get addicted to it because that's the only way out. Think about it. If you're so fucked up that end, the only way out is to go to extreme the other end. Addiction to negative attention, not neutral. Addiction, invisible. Addiction to positive attention. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Because eventually, hopefully, for me, you'll bring yourself back into balance. You'll not need the addiction to positive attention. But it's okay. Because the addiction to positive attention serves a point in your time. You've been so low and addicted to negative attention. Hey, is God consciousness really going to criticize you? You really criticize yourself for getting into the other attention? It's a good thing. You're helping people. Whilst you're addicted to positive attention, you're getting uh, uh, attention for helping people, for doing protocols, being extreme. Fuck it. That's okay. You'll bring yourself back into balance. I like that thought. I think that's true. The law of duality. You've got to go the other way. And I think that's another reason why people with, um, I know it's a reason why people with low self esteem don't ever. Mm, transmute it to positive self-esteem the reason why people don't is because they don't ever get addicted to positive attention as much as they could they're still in the lower dimensions you know but that's okay to a degree it's all paradoxes of what i'm saying i'm just explaining in the simple brain that i've got as much as possible by the way when i realized that last part i realized it was a paradox and that's completely that might not be true what i said because there are people in our community that are addicted to positive attention too. What I mean is, this, let me rephrase that. What I mean, what I'm thinking of in my mind is people that spiritually bypass in our community, um, which I know you guys know of people. We all know people in the spiritual community, health community that spiritually bypass. They have great knowledge, but my God, you can tell within minutes and hours of being in a company and even on Facebook, but especially in a company, you can tell that there's the information's great. I mean, they're like in flow. She or he is in fucking flow. They're like, what? But then there's something you can tell your intuition tells you they're not taking responsibility for their life and they're lying to themselves. They don't have their life put together. They're ungrounded and not in reality, even though they have this beautiful mastery. And that's called spiritual bypassing. And that is something that I'll be honest, I detest. Uh, a lot because um pff, what's the point of being here if you're lying to yourself you're creating a mastery over something but you're lying to your core about who the fuck you are because you're spiritually bypassing these people are very obvious we meet everyone here watching this knows someone that spiritually bypasses they're all crazy they're fucked up they often attack people in the community if not you don't attack other people in the community um they're just the crazy people the ones we can't trust um you know it's dangerous i mean we all give them roles we give them ego roles here the spiritual bypasses don't we we give them roles to not judge them we think they're funny oh it's just who they are it's just who they are it's just who they are and here's their role but actually who they are and our acceptance of them our acceptance of spiritual bypasses basically gives them permission and comfort and security here which ultimately stops stops them from stopping the spiritual bypassing and looking at themselves and confronting their demons. Ultimately, spiritual bypassers and people that don't look at the realities of life are given permission by other people and acceptance by other people. Ultimately, if you didn't give them acceptance, you kick them out of the tribe, which I know sounds harsh, but it's the only way I learned. <laughs> it's the only way I grew by getting kicked out of the tribe. My version put me in a hellhole. It woke me up. Hmm. Lots of paradoxes and things to stew, maybe, if you're watching this. Maybe that's a bit too harsh. How do you stop people from spiritually bypassing? Kicking them out of the tribe? That's not very compassionate, is it, Harry? Yeah, but it is a way to wake people. It's the way definitely to wake people up. Do you want everyone to be spiritual bypassers? Maybe I'm judging people. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I don't like it. Do you know what? I don't, even, I don't really judge people that much. What I do is I discern for myself because I don't want that for me. I don't. I know I've got a mission here. I've got to grow in consciousness. I've got to step up to my role as a man, as a divine masculine man. I've got to keep facing my fears. I've got to. My fears are gonna, never going to stop. 
I've got to keep on taking challenges. I've got to keep on growing. I've got to look at the demons of the mind. I've got to go to the depths of my soul. I've got to see the demons in other realities and face them and look at them barefaced. I've got to see the demons within the shadow work that I've slowly been taking responsibility for, but we all have so much more of the shadow that is really fucking scary that we haven't seen in a child healing. There's so much to do, guys. There's so much endless work to do here in duality, and it's fucking hard. But I will tell you now, though, you come a long way, and the key, I'll give you the one key to your transformation and to keep going and not to lie to yourself. Do you, know, do you want to know the key? It's, I'll keep it simple. you got to face your fears in everything. In physical reality, in your internal reality, in everything. You got to face your fears. People that spiritually bypass, you know why they do it? They're afraid of what they've been through. They can't look at the trauma. It was so painful. It was so painful that they can't look at it. It's too painful. But you know what? What I've been through is so fucking painful, man. It really was. But I had to look at it, man. I had to look at it. I couldn't do that shit anymore. The hardest thing you'd ever do is to heal yourself from the trauma, but you just know there's no place for spiritually not looking at it. You've got to face your demons. Don't build up an ego personality over fucking bullshit. Lie to yourself. That's what them lot out there do. That's what they do. Your friends and family, your blood family that don't understand you, that's what they do. Life is so hard for them. They've been through so much trauma. That they are scared of facing their fears and their demons, their their own shadow. Because life has been so tough for them. Isn't that brilliant what I'm saying? That's a compassionate route, and it's true. They've been through so much, but you've been through so much too. I actually think that we've been through more than them. But it's okay, they've been through a lot too. But they're not facing their fears. Because that's the one key to life. To being divine, masculine and feminine. To being on your journey. Because at every level of duality... There's a new fear to confront. You get used to one fear, guys. And then it becomes, you habitualize and it becomes normal. And it's not a big deal to you. But you should acknowledge how far you've come and it was a big deal. And then you've got new fears. But guess what? Things that are now easy for you that were your fears that you practiced a lot. Other people are afraid of. So now you can teach them and pass on the wisdom. So in other words, if you've practiced facing your fears, you develop wisdom from your growth journey. And each fear that you practice and get good at, say, for example, I don't know, this, this is pretty easy for me, talking on a Facebook live, sharing my journey, my truth. However, I know for a lot of people uh, doing a Facebook live um, and opening them up and it's not just doing it. It's just like I can say what I want. I feel free. I feel honored and lucky. Um, but at the beginning, this would have been weird to me, too. Like, I didn't even use social media properly before 2016. I can't remember my first Facebook Live, but it wasn't like, oh, okay, let's just talk about whatever I want. What was it? It was hard at the beginning, but you get good at things. And then when you're good at something, you can pass on the wisdom to other people. And that's where the, that's where the light workers and spreading knowledge and love comes from. Sharing with others. Because when you face your fears, you grow, and then things beco life becomes a bit easier at that level of fear that you've overcome. But that's a level that other people haven't reached yet, but they might want to. And that's where they get inspired. But likewise, there's people that have pushed through fears, that, f that do things that find things easy that I'm afraid of. So I need to learn from them. For example, if you stick me on the TV tomorrow on a big radio station with loads of people or a big TEDx, maybe I'd be a bit scared. The first two, definitely. Maybe not the third as much, but I don't know. Maybe I would. I've got my fears. We've all got the fears. But the key to growth is always face your fears. And understanding that fears never go away. There's always new levels of fear because that's the law of duality. It just is. You've got to keep facing your fears, man. Like It is the divine within us says that you have to do it. It's how we grow. You know, I'll lastly leave you with my thoughts on why we came here. I think it's very obvious to me, actually. Life is a school. Earth here. This realm for us as consciousness in a human body in duality, because of the laws of duality, which we are subset to the divine opposites, the joy, sadness, pain, death, life, death, man, woman, upside down, all that sun, moon. 
because of the law's duality, we came here to grow in this incarnation. So each incarnation we get, we're here to grow. And part of the growth, and the only way we can grow, the only way you can grow here, is to face your fears. There's no other way to take the red pill. Because here, the autopilot is a world of lies. It's beautiful, yes, but it's set up for your misery and happiness, and it's a world full of lies. You have to unbrainwash yourself, take the red pill, experience cognitive dissonance, grow, learn a fuckload like you're going to school, often with no help and support. Yeah, that's not easy. Got to be broken in this system to do it. But that's the whole point of this place that we come here, in my opinion, to grow. To focus on your vibration, because when you focus on your vibration and your growth and your emanation, it affects everyone around you, whether it be on social media and real life or both. So that's why we came here, man. And that's the hope. And there's always hope. And I think that's why I'm so optimistic. Because I wasn't. And because I've... I have a deep knowledge in my heart of how much my brain has changed. I have a deep... I don't talk about self-improvement halfly ever on social media. None of you guys would ever know me as that. But the truth is, I have a deep... Um, not logical understanding. My whole life... For 10 years now, over 10 years, 22, uh, yeah, it's 10 years now, I've embodied self-improvement principles, thoughts, action, facing my fears, oh my god, value system, beliefs, I'm self-improvement through and through in my blood, I've got growth in my blood now, it's become a part of who I am, I self-grow like I breathe, I often don't have to think about it, I'm just doing it. That's what the light workers that we do. At the beginning, I had to try so hard because it wasn't. Self-improvement wasn't me. But now it is easy and it's my deep mastery. I don't feel a calling to talk about it. I feel a calling to talk about what I do share with you, the things that have healed me a lot. The free, the powerful supplements, the free paid therapies, definitely the psychedelics. They'll heal the brain. But the one thing that I, that really has is the self-help man i've got a deep got it in my in my core so that's cool anyway i've gone over the place so i appreciate you guys for watching i hope you got some values um yeah i just wanted to explain some of the highlights of my life just a dark negative place which you'll never see and um very few people in my life have uh, quite frankly but we always have a knowing when we see people on video we're wondering like where does that person's knowledge their flow their mastery come from well there's mine i from it's also where my empathy comes from um my care to not see other people go through what i've been through that's the core driving as a quote says to your purpose i think this is true for all of us your purpose lies hidden in your wounds where's your wound your deepest wound that's your purpose my purpose is i don't want to see other people go through what i've been through i just don't the social alienation, the demons, the thinking, the f not trusting anybody, anybody. That was shit. <laughs> it wasn't just for a day. That was years on end. Deep, deep negativity there. Yeah. But on the most optimistic note, the human body and truth, the human body and the brain is so powerful. Neuroplasticity. <laughs> this brain, it can fuck you up. But it can change like you wouldn't believe given time given time and it takes time because the more you fuck yourself up with this brain we know this guys the more trauma you've been through the more fucked up you've taken this place the longer it's going to take to heal but the miracle is that this brain is neuroplastic you can completely rewire it from the most miserable fuck on the planet the most bitter selfish low self-esteem cunt um that hates everybody and wants to fucking kill them <laughs> you can come from that to like the most loving kind compact by the way i'm not the most that's the funny thing i'm not the most loving compassionate but i do want to be and because i want to be and because i know what i'm like i will always improve i always get better at that become more loving compassionate we all have egos here i'm well aware in all that stuff but yeah it's from the darkness that gives you the courage and the motivation to become that kind, compassionate, caring person, 
caring person. So with that note, I won't bore you anymore. I will love you more and more, I hope, as I follow my journey. I hope that you guys got some inspiration from it. And it's just nice for me to reflect and to acknowledge that um, it's something that I had to give highlights and talk about this because I don't live, if I'm being real with you guys, I don't understand fully embody that anymore. So it's hard for me to take myself back into that mind state. In fact, it's almost impossible. Um, the brain is rewired so much that I can't. That's why I have to tell you about, oh, I have to watch a movie like an Adam Sandler. And I'll be like, oh, that movie, I, I, I have a vague re re recollection that I used to be like that. Very vague. It's like, oh, yeah, you used to be like that, didn't you? Because the brain is rewired completely, completely. I often wonder uh, if my brain was scanned uh, 12, 14, 16 years ago versus now. Fuck me. I mean, I put in a lot of work. <laughs> Not even on physical health protocols, psychedelics, way before that stuff. That stuff's got upgraded me a lot too. I did a lot of work on the self-help before this stuff. Like, Jesus, man. So anyway, thanks everyone. I appreciate everyone here. I wish you all the best on your growth journeys. I know that we've all got this. I hope to meet many of you in real life. You know, that'd be cool. To inspire to learn. I'm always learning from people. Physical health, emotional health. Try and support where I can, but... Fuck it, man. I'm still on my journey. I need support, too, sometimes, you know, but I try and help where I can. I am strong, but I want to get so much more stronger, kinder, compassionate. I want to get more into my flow, my mastery. I want to go deep with the knowledge that I know, the healing. I want to be on the most powerful supplements and therapies on Earth. I want to go to the dark places of my realm. I want to take loads of psychedelics and go to the demon realms and really see myself and corral myself. I want to walk in this reality like a complete boss, free of whatever people think of me, because I don't really, I'm getting better at it. I want to be free of judgment of what other people think, to be the highest expression of myself, the most compassionate kind that I can be. I wouldn't say comparison with other people. I know there's a lot more to tap into there. Ultimately, I want to be a, an older, wise person that the younger generations look up to and can tell this guy's lived his life on the edge. This guy's lived, and lived a full life. And he has deep wisdom, compassion, all that stuff, and has never... Ultimately, when it's said, I, I don't want anyone to say that I fucking didn't do the right shit, that I was afraid. <laughs> One thing quickly that would crush me if anyone ever thought that I was afraid or fearful. I don't like that because that's the opposite of what I've always wanted to be. I'll never be the fucking fearly cat because I've been there. I've been afraid. <laughs> Two things. I've lied to myself I longed a lot of time. Now I refuse to lie to myself ever. And that's going to be hard. That hurts the ego. Number two is I don't want to be fearful because I spent a lot of my life in fear. It fucking crushed me. But now it's given me the opportunities to present themselves and now in the future. So, yeah. All right. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you got some value. Peace.